Good morning. It's Friday, June 9th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, A Miracle on Malta, out of Scripture's Acts, chapter 28, where the Apostle Paul has just escaped a shipwreck. Once we were safe on shore, we learned that we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, A murderer, no doubt. Though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided he was a god. Near the shore where we landed was an estate belonging to Publius, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us and treated us kindly for three days. As it happened, Publius's father was ill with fever and dysentery. Paul went in and prayed for him, and laying his hands on him, he healed him. Then all the other sick people on the island came and were healed. As a result, we were showered with honors, and when the time came to sail, people supplied us with everything we would need for the trip. Many of us read accounts of healing miracles and how the power of God was all over Paul's daily life's journey. And we think, I could never do that. And for most of us, we're right. The chief reason is that God never called us to be Paul or Peter or John, healing with a short prayer or walking on water or feeding a crowd of 5,000 with a few loaves and fishes. I'm relatively certain God never called me to check out that whole snake handling thing. Well, what is the reason then for seeing this account in Scripture? Like any miracle, God's reasons are His. However, we can say that most miracles are for our encouragement, to help our faith understand who is in control, no matter what the circumstances. Miracles also teach us that our compassionate God cares about us and that we ought to care for others. But the problem is that we fail to connect the dots about our part in the miracles God wants to do. Our part? Hmm. Say a little more about that, preacher. Glad you asked. Miracles come in all walks of life, and to people with strong faith, and to people with little faith, or even those who doubt God even exists. And miracles are entirely a gift which is in God's hand, not because of some innate power any human being possesses. The way miracles show up is surprising. Sometimes it's as private as a prayer at 3 o'clock in the morning when your child has spiked a 104-degree fever for five hours, and you're at your wit's end. You've prayed half a night over that kid, and she keeps getting sicker. Suddenly, out of nowhere, that kid wants a hamburger, and her skin is cooled. The temperature's down, and four hours later, she's on her way to school. Or your house's sick heating system needs to be replaced and the leaves are falling and winter's on the way and your bank account is as sick as the furnace. You never expected to open a manila envelope at the mailbox and discover $4,000 in cash with the unsigned note that said, hope this comes in handy. For you today. Bottom line here. You never know when, why, how, or what will be the answer to the dilemma you're facing. But you can know, very intimately, I might add, who has the answer. And when that happens, thank him and listen closely for when he wants you involved in somebody else's miracle. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.